Let's take a look at what we've done. We've gone through tests of proportions, one and two sample tests, and also various analyses of variance, both parametric and non-parametric, or in the case of GLMs and GLMMs, semi-parametric. We've also looked at other tests of normality, the Shapiro-Wilk test, for example, testing for Poisson distributed variables in the Kolmogorov-Smirnov test, and Levine's test and the Brown-Forsyth test for homogeneity of variance. This is quite a number of tests to master. I encourage you to look up more information about each of these tests before you come to rely on them heavily in your own work. You should feel good about all of the different tests you've done and the organization of those tests into a form like this, which should help you in the future know exactly which tests to use for the kinds of data and experiments that you have. Well, this brings us to the end of our course on experiment design and analysis. You've done a lot of work to cover many different kinds of experiment designs, many kinds of issues that arise when designing experiments and running them, and many kinds of analyses to handle the kinds of data that arise from the experiments that we encounter. You should feel good about everything you've achieved and all the topics that you've covered in this class. But it doesn't stop here. I encourage you to use the R code file supplied with this class and the data sets that we went through to make sure you understand the analyses and feel comfortable running them. Make sure you understand the output. And make sure you look up further help on all of the analyses and the different functions you're calling. Doing that will give you a lot more confidence that you're using the functions in R correctly and you're interpreting the results that you get in the right way. I want to thank you for spending this time with me, and I hope I've given you a good head start in running your own experiments, designing them well, and analyzing the data properly. See you next time.